to program re-entry with the retro rocket package in place and astronaut Glenn was instructed to manually override the automatic jettison mechanism. Now, Roger, say again your instructions, please, over. We are recommending that the retro package not, I say again, not be jettisoned. This means that you will have to override the 05G switch, which is expected to occur at 044353. This is approximately four and a half minutes from now. This also means that you will have to retract the scope manually. Do you understand? Near the end of the third orbit, between Hawaii and the California coast, the retro rockets facing forward were fired to slow the spacecraft for re-entry into the atmosphere. Astronaut Glenn and his spacecraft Friendship 7 landed well within the planned recovery area. All mission objectives had been achieved, including a realization of the primary goal of the Mercury program, to put a man in orbit around the Earth and recover him safely. But the MA6 flight had done even more. It had demonstrated conclusively that man was a necessary requirement for space flight to implement decisions beyond ground control limits, to supplement automated systems with his reason and technical skill. The scope of manned spaceflight had been enlarged. To further qualify the role of man in space and to demonstrate his ability to work in the new environment were now major goals of future Mercury flights. There were three more historic milestones in the Mercury program represented by successive manned orbital spaceflights. All comprised the same basic operation and yet each was different, contributing its own significant data to the overall program. Mercury Atlas number seven, Navy Lieutenant Commander Scott Carpenter in spacecraft Aurora 7 accomplished three orbits for a total flight time of four hours, 53 minutes. The test verified the observations and results of the MA6 flight and contributed valuable space science information. A combination of delayed retrofire and spacecraft alignment resulted in a landing 250 miles beyond the planned recovery area. Otherwise, the flight was completely successful. So successful, in fact, that a re-evaluation of the Mercury mission was made. This re-evaluation confirmed a previous decision to extend the number of orbits for future flights beyond the three originally planned. Mercury Atlas number eight, Navy Commander Walter Schirra in spacecraft Sigma-7 accomplished six orbits of the Earth, 160,000 miles in nine hours, 13 minutes. This extended mission, termed a textbook flight by astronaut Schirra, terminated when the spacecraft impacted less than five miles from the center of the recovery area. Most significant of the flight's results was the confirmation of engineering and operational techniques and procedures, which had been developed for manned one-day missions. The last flight of the Mercury program took place on May 15, 1963, Mercury Atlas number nine. The spacecraft was named Faith 7 by its pilot, Air Force Major Gordon Cooper. Its mission, 22 orbits. Although the spacecraft was basically the same, it had been modified for the extended mission. It had an increased electrical power supply, also more man-required consumables such as oxygen and drinking water. In addition, certain system redundancies had been eliminated, thus making the astronaut an even more essential part of the overall spacecraft system. The flight plans for the MA-9 mission called for astronaut Cooper's participation in 11 different space experiments. These included specific aeromedical studies of man's reaction to extended orbital flight. Other experiments included weather observations, also space photography of dim light phenomena and horizon definition. Observation was also to be made of a specially devised flashing beacon, which was to be released during orbit. All programmed activities were accomplished. Astronaut Cooper demonstrated man's capability to eat and drink and sleep in a space environment. He also demonstrated much more. During the 19th orbit, a green 0.05G light 
similar to the one shown, illuminated prematurely, an indication of possible automatic control system failure. The remainder of the flight had to be made by using manual control. Astronaut Cooper was also required to manually fire the retro rockets and control the re-entry. After more than 34 hours in orbit, Faith 7 returned to Earth and was recovered successfully. The spacecraft landed within 8,700 yards of the prime recovery vessel. Project Mercury came to an unofficial end on that day in May 1963. In actual time, the program lasted four years, eight months, and five days, during which time 900,000 miles were flown and a total of 54 hours of manned spaceflight time accrued. A nation intimately shared the successes of Project Mercury and it also shared its failures. The names and faces of the astronauts Shepard, Grissom, Glenn, Carpenter, Shara, Cooper, and Slayton were well known to the rest of the world. The names of their spacecraft, too, had become household words. To the nation, Project Mercury had a special significance, for it had proved that the closely knit team of industry and government could orient their efforts to the achievement of a common national goal. The ultimate success of Project Mercury, however, can never be fully told, for its story has neither beginning nor end. The program came into being as a continuation of man's effort to meet the space challenge and is being carried on through more advanced programs such as Gemini and Apollo. These and future programs will share a common heritage to ensure their success. A heritage of science and engineering, design and technology, experience and knowledge. The sum of these is the spaceflight legacy bequeathed to all men by Project Mercury. Christopher Columbus sailed to the New World. The success of his journey relied on the ability to sail by instinct and sense of direction, which helped him navigate the vast ocean and stay on course. Columbus's navigation technique